This video is part three of my SM64 decomp hacking tutorial. The last video went over the basics of using Fast64 with Blender and will be the first link in the description. There are two sections of this video. The first will be explaining the functionality of warps and how to set up relationships between them. The second section will be implementing them through Blender with practical examples that you would see when making a level. Section one, there are two parts to a warp. The object in the level, which is where Mario gets teleported to and from, for example, this spot in Bob on Battlefield or this spot in Wet Dry World, the second part is how the warp relates to other warps. The object is pretty simple, as it can just be placed in the level and assigned an ID, although the ID may be a bit confusing the first time you see it. Every object has a list of behavior params, which is typically represented as a 4-byte hex number, like this. However, instead of treating this as one long number, it's usually split up into four 1-byte numbers. Each of these numbers can range from 0 to 255 if we treat them as unsigned, and negative 128 to 127 if we treat them as signed. Most objects use the second behavior param, so this one. In the case of warps, this is where the ID is set. So for our example, if we want the warp to be 19, we would set that as this, since it's hex. A few warp IDs are reserved, however. For our use, those will be F0 and F1, which represent the success and failure warps respectively. Success is when Mario collects a star, and failure is when Mario dies. The second part, which is how to make warps do things, is a bit more confusing, but it's still pretty straightforward. While an object only contains a warp's ID, the level defines where that warp should take Mario. This information is stored in a sort of list, with the entries having the following fields. The reference warp, which is the warp we're using, the level the destination warp is in, which sub-area in that level the warp is in, for our case that will always be 1, and finally the destination warp ID. There's one more param which denotes whether a checkpoint is enabled, like in Lethal Lava Land when we warp inside the volcano. For our use right now, we'll ignore that though. Let's consider that we want warp 0b to teleport Mario to 0c and back. We can set that up by adding an entry for 0b, which places Mario in the same level. We'll just say bob for now, in area 1, and the destination warp is 0c. We can then add another entry for pretty much the reverse, where 0c is the reference warp and 0b is the destination. At this point, if we were to actually add this to a level, that's the bare minimum to get a warp working. Since the reserved warps f0 and f1 are basically the same, we can actually change these to point at different warps as well, and it will just work. Quick note, if you want to see how the base game handles warps, I would recommend downloading Quad64, where you can browse each level and see how the warps are set up there. Section 2. We're back in Blender with the level we set up last episode, but that's not important. All that matters is that you have a level you can export to decomp. In our level, I'll add a new empty axis, set the object to object, and set our warp from the behavior list. For the warp from BOB, we can select a fading warp. We'll move that into position and edit the second behavior param to set the ID. For this one, I'll just use hex01 or ID1. I'll also rename the object in my hierarchy to make it easier to remember and parent it to the area. I'll lower this so it's pretty close to ground level and then shift D to duplicate and move it over a bit. I'll change the second behavior param to ID02 and update the name accordingly. Now that we've got the two warps placed, it's time to add the entries to the level. Select the area the warps belong to and scroll down the properties to find warp nodes. You can expand these to see how the default warps are set up, but for now we'll just add a new warp and set the ID to 01. Since my custom level is overriding Jolly Roger Bay, I'll set that as the destination level, and the area as 1. If you had multiple areas, like an LLL with the inside of the volcano, this is where you can send Mario between them. And finally, I'll set the destination node as 02. I'll add another warp node and do almost the exact same but swapping 01 and 02. If I export the level to decomp, the warps work as expected. Bonus. A couple things I typically do to make development easier is add the warp to a group and place a quad at the bottom so I can find it easier in the game. You can also rotate the warp along the z-axis in Blender to change the way Mario faces when he goes through it. I would also recommend adding an arrow as a child of the warp so it's easy to see which way Mario will exit the warp. With that being said though, that's all it takes to set up warps in SM64. There are different types of warps and I would encourage playing around with each one to see which fits your scenario, but other than that, you're ready to start making levels. The next episodes will go over some more advanced code changes and will be a bit more involved into adding on to the game.